we'll start the class soon. Let some of the participants join as well. Let few others participants join and then we'll start the class. All right, because of limited time, we cannot spare uh, the time anymore. So I'll start teaching now. Those who have joined, thank you very much. I'll be providing regular classes to you all. You can also ask your friends to join if they want. So the thing is, let me introduce myself. My name is Anand. Uh, I'm basically from Varanasi, India, and I, I call myself web developer. So the reason I started teaching for free is because I want each one of you to learn Python for free because I am a self-learned person. I want every one of you to learn it on your own. Guys, believe me, there is no need to join any coaching centers or any, you know, it's all about self-practice. It's all about self-practice that that'll make you good at programming so do not believe all those lies and do not believe all those you know things that the coaching centers people tell you that you want to pay ten thousand you want to pay you know i have seen people taking like twenty thousand thirty thousand rupees for this course so i will and uh, i keep teach for free uh, for group uh, of course now to start with, let's talk about uh, Python. So guys, I know uh, some of the other languages as well, like I've developed few softwares in Java. I also know PHP and uh, I, I also know the scripting languages like uh, HTML, uh, the, the designing language like CSS. So guys, the, this is the complete package that all of you should know. All right, because if you don't know these things, uh, you, are, you are not a complete package, in fact. All right, so uh, let me tell you in a web application or in a website, what exactly Python does. So <clears throat> in a web application or in any kind of software, there are two parts, front end and back end. So for front end, we have uh, scripting languages, which is basically to represent what we want to say. For example, the uh, texts, for example, the images, for example, the layout and the page, how it looks, what is the information. So these are the things which are, um, you know, which are basically shared by, um, which are basically accomplished by uh, using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
but the backend part, like for example, you want to see uh, there's a user and uh, he, uh, you want to create a software wherein whenever the user logs in, if he enters the incorrect password, he should see an error message. So what should be the error message and in what conditions the error message will appear, that will be, that job exactly will be done by Python. There are two kinds of websites in the market these days, static website and dynamic website. So static website is uh, basically which the content of the website doesn't change based on the user. So listen to me very, very carefully guys. The content of the website doesn't change based on the user. However, when we talk about dynamic website, the content changes based on who is visiting the website. For example, if I'm a customer for a website for Amazon, let's say, what should I see on the screen? And if I'm a seller on the website, I should see something else, right? So these are the things uh, which makes the website dynamic and static. So Python helps you to create dynamic website rather than, um, you know, boring, static HTML pages. Now, <clears throat> why Python? Uh, see, uh, Python is basically a very easy language, I should say. Uh, when I say very easy language, the reason I'm saying this is because the syntax in the website, a uh, syntax in the Python, I'm sorry, the syntaxes and the keywords that are used in the uh, Python is basically human readable. So the language that we usually use in our daily life, those are the languages which are being used in Python as well. For example, uh, if you should print a single line in Java, you need to write system dot out dot print ln and then bracket and then your message. So system.out.println, it, it's not our daily words, right? However, in Python, you can simply say print and then the message that you want to print. See, this is that easy. There are a few other things that Python basically does for us is the, I have listed out a few things here. So uh, this is our agenda for today. I started without showing you the, the uh, slideshows. So those who have joined me, I'm so sorry. This is the first time I'm giving you the classes. All right. So I'm, I'm a bit nervous. So spare me if you, you know, uh, at the end of the classes, class like uh, for 15 minutes, I'll ask all of you to unmute and ask if you have any questions for this. And if, if there is something that I can do to improve my classes as well. Right. So in this today's agenda, uh, we will talk about why Python is important and why we should use Python. I think I've already talked about it. How to install Python in your um, system. The environment, environment variable, which is uh, very, very important. I'll tell you what. Uh, and uh, what exactly is an Python interpreter? How can we use Python as a calculator? The value assignment, they will talk about the, the um, variables and the data types. And there are a few fun stuff that we'll do with numbers, uh, basically on the, uh, on, on the end of the class as well. So uh, why is Python important if I should say, you know, in Python, so before listing out these things, there are a few other things that you should know is Python, is an emerging language. If you see the graph on, online, you can see it online on Google or something. In last two years, Python has raised, you know, it's, it's a demand in the market drastically. So back in 2014, only uh, like 20 or 30% of the coding market was for Python. Those, those were the times for Java, .NET, ADO.NET and all. But uh, now Python has taken over almost everything. And the reason I'm saying this because, see guys, the next generation is AI, artificial intelligence and robotics. And, and of course, data. 
and python is good at everything with python you can use the uh, you can make actually you can code for your robot robots you can code for for many other things as well recently i was working with iit bhu and uh, we actually made a lock a dynamic lock uh, which is, which works on a passcode so every time you um, and, and that entire application was made on uh, django so django is a framework which is based on python itself so uh, we'll talk about it in further classes this is the very basic class so i just wanted to give you a you know gist, uh, gist of what python is so using python and some other things like mongodb and arduino we made a lock which exactly works on a dynamic lock system where in every time you want to use a you want to unlock the lock you should you, you can create or you can generate a passcode using the a python web application that we created called qkey and uh, and that particular passcode will open the lock how amazing is that right so python for me i believe python could do anything now there are a few things that i have listed out here as you can see on the screen it has the shorter coding when i say that believe me it's much much shorter than any other language that you know in c sharp in java for printing a simple line you may have to write like 10 or 15 lines of code while in while in uh, python it can be done in in like one line you can see all right so how good you are at python the shorter coding will be it's better than unix batch file if you have ever seen a batch file that is made for unix linux and 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 windows as well there are few batch file in windows as well so those files are much complicated and and harder to understand than for, for a normal human being those who are not experts it's like impossible and for like any other uh language it is reusable when i say reusable i'm talking about the objects so those who are aware of the object oriented programming he he will know what uh, the object oriented programming is and what reusability means and uh, at the same time he he must know what uh, what uh, inheritance is and uh, what is the abstraction so these are the things which are basically for object oriented programming that we should not talk about a lot it's fast and simple it, you know it, it can work with the hardware as well like an example i said we made a lock so uh, this is good at that as well interpreted language so the reason I, i listed out this is because interpreted language is basically a secure language why java emerged this high this fast is because it was an interpreted language in interpreted language you know it basically interprets or checks every zeros and ones in your in your uh, code so basically there is very very less chance to uh, you know uh, to make it, to make the code malicious or let's say the entry of the virus in payment terms the entry of the virus is is like very very less python is basically used for job automation so the things so in fact i started when i started using python i started learning it as a language but now it has become one of my a part of my life and the reason is because the things that i use that i do on a daily basis i could easily automate using python for example when i joined this company uh, i started working for it they were managing the entire order only uh, based only on an excel file and generation of reports um, the seeing the how good the sale is how much they sold in a week how much they sold in a month how much a particular agent sold and this entire order system was was very very you know uh, bad and it was very easy for uh, me to automate the entire thing make a um, order management system using python and make it make it so easy for them that now the owner is uh, very very happy that the entire system is being you know managed very well i'm sorry the screen changed let me just 
back down. Yes. And like I mentioned earlier, Python is a human readable language. So uh, the reason I'm saying this is because most of the syntaxes are the words that we usually use in our daily life, uh, which makes Python easy. And guys, uh, there, are, there are a few frameworks that I have written here. So uh, if you know what framework is, uh, framework is basically some of the pre-coded items because python is is a very basic i mean the core of the language now someone thought that th there are few things that they have to do uh, uh, multiple times so what they did is they made a framework now the framework see if if you have ever heard of cms content management system if you've ever heard of wordpress magento joomla drupal these are the thing uh, frameworks which are made on uh, let's say php now the frameworks makes our life easy how is that for example if we want to connect one form and save it in a in a table now let's say we have 10 forms and so every time we help we'll have to make form 10 times and we'll have to make tables 10 times and then we'll have to you know define the relationship between the tables so that makes it a very very tedious task and frameworks make it very very easy so django uh, and flask are few other a few of the frameworks which are which makes making the software very very easy guys again this is the first time i'm giving the live class so uh, please uh, be patient with me and uh, later on i'll be open for any kind of feedback so now let me move on to the next part uh, actually this uh, um, so you can always contact me on this number you can always some ask someone to contact me on this number now let me start sharing my uh, other screen so that you can see how to install python which was the uh, agenda of our um, of our class today uh, give me a sec so that i can start sharing the new yeah uh, can anyone confirm if they can see my uh, Google Chrome browser so that, you know? In the chat, if someone can confirm they can see my Chrome browser, please. All right, great. Thank you very much, Ayush. So this is where Python um, is. Um, you can install Python from. So python.org is the uh, website that you can easily Google. Click on downloads and click on download Python. So as you can see, I have downloaded the Python here already so that we don't waste our time downloading it. Uh, so Python is, uh, this is one more beauty of Python guys. Python is available for like all the platforms as you can see. Python is for Windows, for Linux. In fact, for Linux, you don't have to download it. For Linux, it's already inbuilt. For Mac OS, for those who are using the rich guys, you know, <laughs> for using Apple and a few other um, operating systems as well. So you can choose of your Python version, the Python version you are uh, compatible with, but I wouldn't recommend you downloading the most recent one or the very old one like you you don't want to use python one or two version anymore because python 3 is out already so uh, what i recommend is using python 3 because it has some cool features like pip and everything that i'll, I'll let you know later on but um, the problem with uh, the most recent one is uh, there are always few bugs and if you're a beginner it's hard for you to understand what's happening and you feel you you'll just lose your enthusiasm so uh, better that you use the most uh, established one all right so i always um, um, uh, from last few months i've been using python 3.7 which is working okay with almost everything now 
Um, so um, you can easily click on download. You can download it and, uh, you know, I'll have to share the, another screen so that you can see the uh, desktop. And let me just start the Python installer so that you can see. And then I'll share the screen. All right, let me share the new screen now. Where's my Python installer? Here. As you can see, um, since Python is already installed in my system, it gives me an option for modify, repair, or uninstall. But for you guys, you can um, you know uh, click on install. The install option will be there. While installing, uh, you must you know click on this pip thing uh, because it is it is very very important for you to. Uh, as you can see here, install pip, which you can download, install, and uh, other Python packages because when you are working with Python, you cannot work with Python a lot because you know a lot of other guys have already made cool things, uh, which is called module or packages that you can easily download and uh, you can easily uh, you know import in your application and use it freely. So uh, pip is very important or any like for installing any kind of framework or module you, you use pip command uh, we'll see that later not in the basic class of course and uh, those who are installing it uh, there will be an option for environment variable so uh, if you recall i had this thing written on my agenda as well so environment variable is basically uh, you need to check that option, which is somewhere here. If you can see my mouse, uh, uh, you need to check that option. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you check that option, it will enable you to use Python from anywhere of your system. I'll give you an example. And you just click on next and Python will be installed just like any other software in, the, in, in Windows or Linux, all right? So uh, let me start the, um, uh, the let, let me show you my command prompt so that you can see what this, uh, this uh, uh, Python uh, environment variable does. So here's my command prompt. I hope you guys can see if anyone could confirm because I'll be on this command prompt for a long time. So if anyone could confirm if they can see my um, command prompt. Pradeep, are you confirming that you can see my command prompt? Yes, sir. All right, great. So um, you can see my command prompt as, uh, okay, great. So now I was uh, talking about the environment variable. So as you can see, the, the, this is how to check if Python is installed in your computer, guys. Uh, you just need to simply type Python. Can you guys see the text? I have made it bigger, but I'm not sure if you can see it. So can you confirm if you can see my text in the chat, someone? Yes, sir, we can see it. All right, great. Thank you very much. Keep yourself <laughs> muted. Uh, okay, so all you need to do is type Python and uh, you can just double dash Python version and you can see the Python version here, which is 3.8.5 in my case. So someone asked me, I, I guess Pradeep asked me in the chat that uh, he used 32 bit, uh, which is fine or not. So basically guys, Python is uh, independent and, and the configuration of your computer doesn't matter for Python, one thing. Second thing, it is as simple as that. If you have 64-bit system, you should download the 64-bit Python. If you have 32-bit um, system, you should download 32-bit Python, okay? Though in some cases I've seen Python, uh, which is made for 32-bit system also works for 32, uh, I mean 64 bit system. So you don't have to worry a lot about that. Uh, I hope you guys know where to see uh, the system configuration. You'll have to click on this PC or my computer and uh, right click on it and just, you know, click on properties. And I think it is listed somewhere in, in that. Uh, it, anyone can ask me if they have such a, you know, simple question. 
So this is how you can confirm if the Python is installed in your computer. If you see a Python version here, uh, you know, uh, 3.8 or something, that means Python is installed. Otherwise it's not, you can always go ahead and download it. Now, I was talking about environment variables. So guys, as you can see, I'm in C users and my computer name, which is Lenovo 520. So uh, if I type in Python, uh, version I I just saw it for example I went to my e drive directly and I typed python version here guess what python is installed here as well and the reason python is installed here as well because I checked that environment variable option so make sure that you check so that you can access python from anywhere of your system now the next thing that I wanted to talk about is Python, this is called Python. Uh, let, let me talk about the Python interactive mode. So uh, there's one more thing that I would like to add, though it's boring, but the best way to learn Python from scratch till the, uh, you know, expertise, you should always follow the documentation, which is there on the Python's uh, you know, there are a lot of guys who are teaching it for free, but it's always better to search for your queries and to know new things on Python, Python's website and Python's uh, documentation. Now, um, let me talk about the Python interactive mode. Now we are going to the fun part. Python is, is a very, um, you know, Python is a thing which, uh, you know, uh, how should I say? It's very interactive. When I'm saying interactive, I mean you can you can just play around uh, Python for days, and uh, and uh, you will always be amazed with Python can do. Now uh, I'm going to the Python interactive mode for those who have joined me just now. So guys, we have already talked about a lot of things. We have already talked how uh, what are the importance of uh, using Python and uh, how to install Python. Now I'm getting into the Python interactive mode. And there's one more thing that I would like to say. Uh, guys, keep yourself muted, please. And uh, this is the first time I'm giving the classes and this is the third time I'm mentioning it. So I'm open for the feedback. Um, so let me let me get into the Python interactive mode. And all you need to do is uh, from anywhere in your system, just type in Python and hit enter. So you can see Python's version here. You can see the, the tags, MSC code, help, copyright, credits, and license, right? So you can just, you know, you can follow it along. You can just type help and uh, let's say type help. And these are the welcome to the Python 3.8 help utility. So you can just always go to internet and you can always, you know, download Python from here. Tutorials are there, python.org. You can enter the name of any module, any keyword. For example, if I want to uh, know about the list. So I just uh, typed in here list and the information about list is listed here. See, this is that easy to get help. Now, if I type in exit, uh, control x is it so these are the things you know you can always get along with these are the functions that can be used with list which are being listed here reversed set item side of a lot of things guys it never ends Control Z or Control X thing should work. It doesn't. So let me just close this out and start a new one. I'm going to start it with you guys now. So I didn't know how to get out of that help thing because this is the first time I started using help like this. 
so i'm gonna go to my t drive i'm gonna hit type python so guys uh, basically uh, that is how you can get help you can always go to website as well these three angular brackets that means it is asking for some input and uh, for example if i type in print and i typed in teaching is the best way of i'm sorry someone typed something let me see oh okay <laughs> so guys this, this is the first time i am using help from my command prompt i didn't know how to get out of this okay so teaching teaching is the best way of learning this is my motto so i just typed in print and this entire statement hit enter and teaching is the best way of learning is what it says i'm sorry there's a spelling mistake let's not talk about that so all i wanted to um, let you focus is these three angular brackets these are this means it is asking for input and the statements which doesn't have any uh, angular bracket that means it is the output of what the input is all right so let me do some other things as well interactive mode so let's say let me do something good so let's say i am writing here good teacher is equals to true i'm sorry i think i capital t yeah right thank you very much so good teacher is equals to true and uh, i am using a condition here good teacher if good teacher and and if i am saying if good teacher that means um, it is checking if the good teacher value is true or not probably you wouldn't understand that much but which is okay so i'm going to print is a good learner now since the condition is true see guys i'm i'm talking about the concept this is not just one thing about python only okay this is true for all the programming language that you know you probably uh, you know if you are familiar with java if you are familiar with any kind of oops uh, object oriented language or non object oriented languages as well if you want to check something with condition we should use if clause so this is true with python as well so now one more enter sir one more enter and it says he is a good learner why because good teacher is true so again with the three angular brackets it is again asking for let's say input which we will not do anymore for comments guys if you want to make some comments you can use this hashtag like this is a comment this is this is basically ignored by the interpreter now we are going to use let me see how much time is left in this uh, class it's already okay so probably the class will end soon uh, so okay we'll do as much as we can and then we'll schedule another class so now we are going to use python as a calculator so to get out of this you need to use this control z and you can you will get out of this let me clear the screen get into the python interactive mode again <clears throat> so this interactive screen itself can be used by as a as a computer and uh, if you have guys have learned about the bodmos uh, python exactly works you know in the same fashion so first it will solve a bracket and then it will solve a multiply of thing then division then multiply and everything the same way you had learned in when you were in in you know 6th or 7th class maybe earlier so for example if i say 3 plus 5 the output is going to be 8 as simple as that if we can also 
you know subtract things when we when we say divide i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to um use um you know one thing which is um, i'm going to tell you one thing in fact which is of data type so guys data type is as the name suggests it means what type of data is being stored entered or you know assigned to a particular variable now i am using a word variable here uh, variable is basically a storage um space let's say which stores the value which holds the value so uh there are different type of variable and based on how type um, type cast that particular language is i'm i hope i'm making sense uh you know for example php doesn't care what kind of data type you are entering so for for them string integer it's more of same but for python it is it is like very strict so you know you'll have to uh, and java it is the most strict or let's say strict strictest i don't know language that i've ever known they they are very strict with their data types and which is a good thing because it doesn't allow your users to enter incorrect data or it doesn't allow your um, your users to incorrect the you know bad information or bad input which could actually harm your website or web application so uh, you know type should be very strict now the reason i mentioned data type is because the i'm, I'm going to use the division part now so the division in python is always in float data type float means the decimal thing all right there's a difference between integer and float integer means the um, integer values Uh, like one, two, three, four, like this. The numbers which are in decimal, uh, those are always stored in float. For example, if I even if I say two by two here, it will say one point zero. It will not say one. Why? Because division in in Python is always in float uh, data type. And uh, multiply, of course, you can always now. Uh, I I said board mos. so let me say if i i'm using the very simple thing 4 plus 4 into 5 so you know the first thing it will do is it will add 4 plus 4 and then it will multiply it by 5 which is 40 all right so it uses the same thing the board mos for example if i uh, let's do a, a, an experiment i've never done this before let's say 5 minus 3 into 5 now uh, can anyone tell me what should be the output of this one i'm opening the chat now so that i can see 10 anyone else pradeep said someone said 10 let me let me hit enter minus 8 minus 10 someone said minus 8 okay it's uh, right now um, minus 10 minus 10 someone said Okay, I'm waiting for some other answers, or I will just minus ten. Mr. Zan said minus ten. Murli said minus eight. Let me see. So it's minus ten, guys. So what it basically is doing, you know, uh, it is uh, first. It is just multiplying because in board mass, multiplies come first, right? So five. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, right. So five into three is fifteen, which is in minus because three is minus, and then it is uh, uh, subtracting the value five. So you can see it is using the uh, board mass thing, right? However, if you if you guys know math, if you want to go for machine learning or if you want to go for um, uh, data uh, handling, you should know maths very well. however if i say 5 minus 3 inside the bracket and i say into 5 what will be the output of this one guys
it should be 10 yeah guys come on do good some math it will be 10 let me just hit enter someone just joined and the meeting is about to get over so it will be plus 10 because first it is subtracting the value and then it is adding because in bottom also bracket come first bracket is bracket comes first right so this is how you can use python interactive mode interpreter as a calculator now i'm gonna tell you a few other things i don't know how much time is left does anyone know how to check the timing on zoom or can you see it how much time is left in this meeting any one of you because there are two things that i wanted to talk about so i don't think much time is left because i started at 3 15 so it should be about to it should about to end i don't know can anyone see the time actually it has ended uh, already but uh, it was saying that uh, you can continue uh, how how much you want to oh i thought it is uh, you know limited for 40 minutes only so everyone is no, no. every everybody's um, you know they can they can hear me and they can see my screen right yes we okay. can okay great so uh, now there are a few other things that i want to talk about is uh, basically which is very very specific to python because these are the things which are like um, um, which are very much related to maths and, uh, and this is very uh, simple things but there are a few things which are which are you know specific to python and the first thing is floor division i'm gonna ask you guys to unmute when uh, you know you have to answer you can answer in chat as well i have the window open here so uh, there's one thing i said division whenever you're div uh, dividing something it always returns the value in float. Uh, do you know why I'm, I'm emphasizing in uh, this? Uh, because, you know, you should know what type of data or let's say what data type you are dealing with. Okay. So, for example, if I say 1 plus 1.0, this will come to float. So, you should not expect that you are, you, if you're adding an integer and a float, it will come back as, it in, as an integer. So the thing is, okay, someone asked, is there much difference between 3.8.3 uh, version and 3.855 version? Okay, so this is, I think, Zan. So Zan, or I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, there are two things that I would like to add here. The first thing is, uh, I will, um, hold, um, okay, thank you. <laughs> I will hold a question answer round at the end of the meeting. So, uh, but since you have asked already, I should answer. There isn't much difference uh, in, in 3.8.3 and 3.8.5 because, uh, you know, all they do when they work on versions is to add some new features and fix some bugs. That's all they do, all right? So the basic doesn't change ever. Be it three, Python 1, Python 2, or Python 3. The basics and the fundamentals of the Python, it never changes. The things which changes is basically they add some new features and they add some, you know, uh, new, um, let's say they fix some bug bugs. So that's all they do with the versions. Great. Now, the th thing that I wanted to talk about is floor division. So floor division is basically denoted by double slash. And this actually, what it does is it discards the fractional part. When I'm saying this, let's go by example. For example, if I am dividing 10, 10 uh, by, let's say, 3. It is not fully divisible. So 10 divided by 3, the value would be 3.3.3.3333. 3. However, 
if I am using 10 divided by 10 floor division 3, now the value would be 3. So the fractional part which is less than 1 will be discarded when we are talking about floor division. So the floor division is basically used when you don't care about the decimal values anymore. All right, like uh, if you are generating a bill, which is and you you are adding the bill and uh, now it is um, like 37.23. But your boss says, see, uh, I just want to round off this 23 paisa and let's keep it 37 rupees only. That's where you can use this floor division thing. So I'm going to ask you guys 54 divided by 2 this uh, floor division 2 this could be tricky so can anyone tell me uh, i'm sorry divided by let's say 4 it is not fully divisible uh, can anyone tell me what should be the output of this one Thirteen. okay i got one answer as 13 anyone else Someone said on the chat three or 13, Zan, is it three or 13? 13, okay, great. So it is 13 because after 13, it'll just, you know, because that the value remains, the remainder which remains is two. So it discards the remainder, it discards the fractional part of the um, calculation. That's all it does. The next thing that I want to talk, which is also specific to Python is module. You can call it module or you can call it fraction as well. So that what, what basically that does is it returns the remainder. Now see, understand guys, this is very useful when you're talking about data science. Well, that is a big thing, but you know, it's important. So, give me one sec. All right. So the module is uh, represented by this percent sign. So basically it only returns the remainder. For example, if I say 10 divided by, divided by three, I'm sorry, I just used divided 10 module three, it will give me one because that is the remainder. Okay. So sometimes it is important when you are doing some mathematical things and especially, uh, especially if you're doing some data science and machine learning thing, this is very important guys. If you want to be good at Python, be good at math. All right. That's how you, you will, you know, grasp everything. So module, it basically returns only the remainder part of the calculation. So if I, if I am to give you a test, let's say um, 24 floor division three, plus 34, sorry, 34, Modulo, let's say five. Calculate it and let me know the answer. And also let me know if you if we are going to see some error on this one. Is it too hard or what? Come on. It's just uh, the addition, guys. Come on. What are you guys doing? Uh, it is 8 plus 4, which is 12. Okay. Someone answered 12. I think it is Ayush. Who else? Well, that, are you copying Ayush all the time? 
because you just answer after Ayush answers. Is it so? He answered uh, before me. He answered before me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't check it. I'm sorry, Zen. Okay, so if I hit enter, it is 12. So both of you are correct. And you guys are really, you know, paying attention here. So this, these are the two things. And the third thing that I'm going to talk about is power calculation. So guys, you know, uh, like square or cube, something like that. Basically it works with uh, the, the, all the things. So for that, you we need to use two stars, all right? So for example, if I am to get the cube of two, this is how I will write. Two star star cube, the answer will be eight. So these are three things which are very, very specific to Python and very, very useful as well. The flow division, the fraction, which is called module as well, or modulo, and the power calculation. So other than four simple operations of adding, uh, addition, division, multiplication, and uh, um, subtraction, these are three things which will make your life easier. So better you start playing with all this. The next thing that I will talk about, let me just come out of this. I'm sorry, always use X. Clear the screen, enter in my interactive mode again. And uh, okay, so now we'll talk about the value assignment. I already told you guys about the variable. So variable is nothing but a reference. Okay, I'll get back to you then. So variable is nothing but a, a reference, which is, which keeps the data. It, it's, it's basically uh, a space where the data is stored, like we did earlier as well. For example, if we are making a software where we need to, you know, calculate the volume of a cuboid, right? We all know the formula of uh, calculating the volume of a cuboid, which is width into length into height. Uh, in India, it's um, LBH. So I'm going to assign some values. For example, I said width is equals to, let's say, 20. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanted to mention. Those who are coming from a different programming language, they are, must be used to this semicolon, all right? So guys, Python doesn't care about it. You can put a semicolon, you do not put a semicolon, that's all. Now, I mean, it's same. What Python more cares about is this colon, okay? So this colon means a lot, but this semicolon, Python really doesn't care about it. Now, if I say width is equals to 20, before calculating, I'm gonna show you something. So what I basically did here is, I assigned the value 20 to a reference width. When I was learning this, there were a lot of you know uh, confusion. So always remember, this always goes from right to left. So it's not like 20 is the variable name and width is the uh, value. It's always from right to left. So it's like 20 always goes into width. Okay, I hope this is clear. So it's always right to left. So Assignment in the beat in Java, Python, uh, PHP, assignment is always like this. It's always from right to left. Now, if I say print, now, this is very, very simple, but I'm gonna show you guys. So now the value which is in width is 20, and I'm asking to print width. So it will, Print width. 
gonna do this again with little change. Can anyone tell tell me um, what could be the output now? I'm opening the chat with anyone else. What will be the output now? It will be a string with. Yes, it will be a string. And the reason, see, I wanted to show you the difference between the variable name and the string. And the only difference is that code. So if there is something which is in, inside a code, this will print the exact thing which is inside the code. However, if we are um, uh, printing it as a variable, it will print the value that it holds. All right. So now let me see. Um, you can also change the variables, uh, you know, width is equals to, I can say 40 now. And if I ask to print this width, this will say 40. And till the time I change the value, it will hold the value of 40. So for example, if I say height is equals to 10 and uh, length is equals to 20 and I used a formula here, volume is equals to width into height into length. Now, Always remember right to left, whatever the calculation of these three will be, it will be stored in a variable of volume, named volume. Now, if I ask to print volume, it will just print 8000, which is the um, multiplication of all these things. If I just say uh, something like this. Let's say I say I made a spelling mistake. So these error messages are also very useful. For those who are coming from some kind of programming background, it is not a big deal. But those who are starting with Python, you know, you should always see these error messages and it makes sense most of the times. Sometimes it doesn't because it's not a human. It just, you know, interprets and it displays the message. But most of the time it, it makes sense. Name error, name width, which is a spelling mistake, of course, is not defined. So with these error messages these are inbuilt to python and uh, inbuilt to other languages as well uh, these error messages can easily be uh, can can help you to find out uh, what is wrong with what you're doing so make sure that if you're making a mistake make sure that you are reading the error messages accordingly you can take actions to complete now, let's say if I'm making a, a, a program for some billing thing. This is the last thing that I'm gonna do. The billing thing, uh, uh, I mean, this, these were the simple calculations that you can easily do otherwise as well. So give me a moment here. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm working for a boss which, who says uh, your program should calculate the amount that is to be paid by the customer. Now what will be the amount is based on two things, the price of the item and quantity of the item and the discount. Getting it? Now, so we need three variables. Let me just clear out the screen. 
someone asked me how do i cl how do you cls so basically i just type cls but before using cls you'll have to get out of that interactive mode otherwise it won't work okay so you can get out of that interactive mode using control z or control z those who are familiar of us english anyways or so you can use the uh, exit and uh, uh, that parentheses exit and parentheses you can use yeah inside inside parenthesis exit and uh, you know exit and this bracket will also get you out of this interactive mode okay so these are the things great whoever you are pradeep i think So I'm going to make a program which will basically multiply the price of a product in the quantity and then subtracts the discount which is being given to the customer. So I'm going to use three variables here. First the price. Let's say the price of that uh, thing is um, 10 rupees per and uh, the quantity let's say he purchased four items and we are giving him a discount of two rupees let's say 10 rupees now uh, i'll have to do a calculation and we'll have to store that calculation in a variable so let's say I'm using a variable uh, to pay amount. And since I'm at this, uh, let me tell you some of the conventions or rules when you are naming a variable. So these are mostly common to almost all the languages, but there are a few things that you are, um, you know, you have to maintain. Whenever you are using a, making a, a naming a variable, I should say, you should never start with a number. You should never, uh, um, you cannot, I should say, you cannot start a number uh, variable name with a number with special characters like at the rate or M percent or percent sign star. These things are cannot, cannot be used. It is a good practice to, um, you know, make a meaningful variable name. When I'm saying meaningful, the price, you can always uh, use A, B, C, these kind of variable names, but always try to use, make it a practice to use, uh, you know, lengthy variable names that makes sense. For example, I said, I said to pay amount, underscore can be used as well. Uh, Though you can uh, name a variable with capital letter, it's not a good convention among programmers. So variable name should be, you know, lowercase only. And the reason is for your good. You know, if we, uh, because the convention is when you're naming a class, if you're naming an object, that should be uh, either camel class or should start with this capital letter. So if you are naming a class with a capital letter and a variable with a capital letter, when, I'm, when you are making a big program, ultimately you are going to get confused um, which, is, uh, which one of this is class and which one of this is variable and which one of this is method, which one of this is object. So this is for your own good uh, made by the programmers, a convention made by the programmers not necessarily that you have to follow, but it is a good practice to uh, use the lower case when you are naming a variable and use upper case when you are naming a um, class name. So the total amount should be, total amount should be price into quantity minus discount now this calculation 
is going to get stored in a variable which is named as to pay amount. Now we have the amount now. We can go ahead and print this to pay, I'm sorry, amount. So which is very much easy as the 10 into four. This is why I told you about Bodmos practice that Python follows. So if I say, if I say to pay amount is equals to price into quantity minus discount, what will be the uh, value which will be stored to to pay? Can it should tell be me? same. It should, should be, be 30. Should be same. Anyone else? Let's see. And the reason it is same is because this also follows the same Bodmos thing. I mean, the value doesn't didn't change, but in some cases, you know, the um, uh, the value could be different as well. So in short, whenever you are, uh, you know, this though it shows the same thing, but it's not a good practice. This one, it's a good practice. This makes sense that first we will, uh, I mean, the first thing that it will check is the bracket. So it will first multiply and then divide. Okay. So I hope that you guys uh, understood what I said for next five minutes. Um, I'll, I'll ask you guys to unmute and uh, ask me if you have any question or something and then we'll end the class. Uh, I thank you everyone for, uh, you know, sticking up with me, though it was very basic, but I tried to cover a few things in the next class that I'll try to schedule soon. Uh, we'll talk about the new things and, uh, you know, some interesting stuff as well. Though we are working on command prompt as of now, there are a few editors that you can use. I always use um, uh, VS code, which is, you know, have worked so far, have worked fine for me, but you can always use notepad, notepad plus notepad is not recommended because it is very, very basic though you can use it. Um, the last thing um, you should always, whenever you're saving a file for Python, you should always use an extension of .py. Some programmers say it is .py and um, you can run it. You should uh, use some text editors like VS Code, brackets, sublime text, and um, Atom, and the list goes on. But I have used um, VS Code as of now, which have worked fine. Um, let me just show you my VS Code and I hope you guys know about Emmet. Does anyone know about Emmet? Mm, I guess no. So let me just open my uh, VS code and let me tell you what Emmet is and why this is important to use some, you know, the, 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 the one I told you, uh, most of them are free open source, but I think Sublime Text asked for payment sometimes, but rest of them are free. VS code bracket, bracket is always free, Atom is free. Atom is always good. For Python, there, there's one IDE which is called PyCharm. That is also good, and though I never use it because I am I'm very used to VS Code. I don't want to change anymore. But you guys can go ahead and try, see what suits you, and you can use it. So we are not able to see your uh, Chrome browser, I guess. 
no i'm not uh, using my chrome browser i'm just trying to open vs code and share it with you guys to let you know what emmet is because it is very useful when you are programming and it makes a lot of sense okay. let me just open it from here only so this is one cool thing about um code you can just start it with code what is jupyter notebook is it recommended jupyter notebook is uh, i think nothing more than this uh, python interactive mode uh, you can go ahead and give it a try it's good for practice uh, but to be honest i i never use it i i prefer to be on command prompt rather than on jupyter notebook it, the reason is jupyter notebook is like yeah it, it is good but i don't know i never use it <clears throat> actually we do a lot of coding that's why we don't use that thing yeah because it, it is basically for practice yeah so the, that practice uh, if we we want to uh, if we want 100 lines of code then uh, in one box if we have to put 100 lines and that doesn't make any sense to me yeah of course and i think this um, using some kind of ide like bracket pycharm uh, vs code is much easier than this jupyter notebook so uh, i i took some of the edureka classes and they they focus a lot on jupyter notebook but to be honest i never do this i i don't use jupyter notebook so i'm going to share my vs code here let me make a new file save it i'm working some on some of the projects i'm working with a school project as of now uh, on their attendance system and everything i'm working on a, a web application which is for um, order management system as well i'm working on some websites as well so those who wanna see the live in moment can also contact me and in addition to this guys this is a, a suggestion to all of you if you guys wanna uh, be good at uh, you know being good at python only Uh, will not get you a good job or let's say if you are a freelancer like me you may not be able to um, you know complete the project until you know a little bit about html css and javascript so focus on those as well okay in addition to that you should always um, focus on learning framework rather than the language only so start with flask if you're learning python start with flask and if you are good with flask you can start learning django i did the opposite thing which was quite inconvenient for me so i didn't know about the urls the the basic concept i didn't know i st i directly started learning django uh, which made it hard it took a lot of time learning django so better you learn the easy one first once you are good with the concept you can move on to the um so the actually in 12th syllabus we are using django so we have to study django first first well i recommend uh, actually in 12th syllabus and crt uh -huh. we mm -hmm. are uh, uh, doing django first or not flask so we know. have to study first no uh, but it will be easy for you to understand flask first and then django because django is mm -hmm. basically for much more complicated web applications rather than these uh, um, flask is for like light applications and and the concept that i have seen the concept overall concept for the framework for both of them are same so okay. uh, django has a lot of things you know 
that you'll have to uh, uh, understand and learn even if you want to start and, and show a single line of code you'll have to make changes at a lot of places um, uh, that that usually people forget okay you'll have to make changes to your template you'll have to make changes to your uh, views dot yeah, you'll have it to it is make uh, too much to cus uh, customize things and uh, yeah you'll have, we have to. to customize right but uh, in flask it is like very easy but once you have a uh, grasp with flask then it will be easy for you to learn Django because most of the things of Django you've already learned in Flask and you'll be equipped with two frameworks, Flask and Django. Mm -hmm. and, and if you start learning Django first, which I did, which was wrong, that's why I'm telling you, guys, listen, I'm a self-learned person, okay? I never went to any college or I never actually have any kind of degree, but I have, I have been a part of a lot of projects which made me uh, learn these things okay so what i am saying is by experience uh, so it will be better if you learn flask first but even before learning flask first you should be good at python i mean somewhat good at python because if you don't understand the concept of module if you don't understand how to import things and you know uh, reference things from one file to another you wouldn't get a thing all right so first you should uh, understand let me just um, share the uh, vs code of mine and tell you what emmet is so emmet makes our life easier so for example if i if you um, know the skeleton of the um, what it says html so it it starts with doc type and everything however in in uh, can you guys see? I, I don't know if you can see. So if, if, uh, using the emmet, it will be much easier. Yes, uh, using emmet, it will be much easier and less code. So for example, if, I'm, if I want to try that um, um, HTML skeleton, all I have to do is use this um, uh, exclamation sign and you'll see an option here, emmet abbreviation. So you can see, uh, always go ahead to the li link and check what it is. You can click on control space um, and you can click on just tab and it will, you know, give us the entire emmet, an entire skeleton for HTML. We don't have to write anything, the meta tag, the title tag. So you can, you can always go and, uh, you know, make changes here. And for example, if I want I'm, I'm to make a list for example, a list, an unordered list, let's say. Those who are familiar with, with HTML will understand this. The code for making a list is UL. So for example, if I if you want to make an um, unordered list, which consists of five list items. So if we are doing it with, without Emmet, we'll have to use UL first, okay? And then LI every time. And we'll have to you know copy paste you can either copy paste or type it manually while using emmet you can use it you can do it in a much easier way you just type ul okay and use this angular bracket li and use this star where is that star star and let's say i'm i have to make seven list items so click on seven and hit tab. See, it made seven list items inside a UL. So using Emmet make our life easier. And using VS Code, there are a lot of cool things that, uh, see, there are a lot of things that you guys have to learn. You guys can uh, learn as well. I'm giving you a hint. So learn about Emmet as well. If you're going to do some programming, learn about Emmet as well. Because if you have to type everything, then um, you know you will consume more time on typing rather than on uh, uh, you know focusing on the basic stuff. So always use Emmet. Okay. So by saying this, I'll end the class. I don't know. I took a lot of your time, uh, and uh, I hope I made some sense today. I'll schedule uh, another class. Do you guys have any questions for me before we end this meeting or class, whatever it is?
uh, actually I teach uh, in my group uh, where you have sent the link. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not teaching now because I don't have my PC. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of uh, collabing with you. I want uh, I want to make a project with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is uh, for uh, students a uh, dynamic timetable ta- kind of thing. तो इसमें क्या होता है कि समझ लीजिए हम लोग ने सिलेबस पता लगा लिया चैप्टर्स पता लगा लिए उसके हिसाब से अपन ने शेड्यूल कर लिया कि कौन सा एग्जाम पहले आने वाला है कौन से कौन से चैप्टर्स अपन को पढ़ने हैं ऐसा कुछ रहेगा प्लस अगर जितने दिन का अपन का रहेगा मतलब जितने दिन बाद एग्जाम आने वाले हैं उसके हिसाब से अपन का जो खेलने का टाइमिंग फिर पढ़ने का टाइमिंग ये सब चीज कम ज्यादा होना चाहिए ऐसा कुछ मैं सोच रहा था तो उसको कैसे करेंगे अपन वैसा इंग्लिश प्लीज बेसिकली आई थिंक मुरली इज फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया सो मुरली आई एम सॉरी दिस इज नॉट मी स्पीकिंग दिस इज आयुष स्पीकिंग सो आयुष टू वन थिंग यू नो गेट बैक टू मी विद ऑल द डिटेल्स because uh, explaining okay. the entire project in two three lines will not make sense we'll have to break down that's the, true yeah break down the things into smaller things and then we can start coding mm-hmm. about it okay so this is not something that we can uh, since this is your personal project you want to collab with me so this is not something which uh, you should uh, you know uh, share with other participants or share in this class you can get back to me and we can talk about it we can schedule things accordingly okay 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 fine thank you no problem uh, just anyone have any other questions zan you still have your hand raised do you have any question oh he lowered it murli do you have any question buddy okay good murli where are you from chennai okay cool thank you very much all um, for joining the class uh, see i'm i'm you know most of the times i'm coding and uh, i keep myself busy with with things so that is why it took this long to um, start our first class but this second class um, will be hosted soon i hope all of you will join me again i'll send the link i think meeting id and and password i am not much familiar with this zoom thing guys so i hope this meeting id and password will be same i'll schedule the meeting and i'll message at least these four five people those who are with me for the entire time i'll message you privately um zan um, i'm not sure as of now but um, i think within next 2 3 days I'll, i'll certainly schedule another class for an hour or so and then we can talk about the uh, later part of python uh definitely murli uh, i'm i'm mostly active on um, telegram group if you have guys if you guys have joined you can yeah certainly um yes we'll discuss about the frameworks because the framework without framework you are like handicapped so we'll certainly discuss about the framework as well uh, but not now because you must have some basic understanding about the core language before you um talk about the framework so for first few classes uh, if this goes well zan murli and ayush if this goes well i'll start giving class every day Uh, at least for one uh, one hour or so um, but you know since i also work in a company it is hard for me to get time but uh, since i love teaching and i want you know this to be available for free for everyone uh, i am trying to get some time and definitely i will uh, schedule the first class as soon as possible and if this goes well i will definitely schedule another class take this afternoon timing says i okay afternoon timing zan i cannot promise you this um, afternoon timing 
because even um, you know um, how about even night guys if, if you guys are good at night time like after nine or something i have time on that particular period so if you if you if you guys are good at night time we can schedule some classes at night and if we if we join night then definitely i'll be able to um, spare one week um, uh, one day um, i mean one hour every day so zan is fine murli is fine pc he doesn't respond and this are you yes i'm fine with that uh, actually i make we uh, that to teaching stuff i do in mm -hmm. meet uh, but i am not doing uh, now so i can join okay great so all right guys so i'll, I'll uh, schedule the class i'll intimate you um, you already have my number if not then let me just give you my number here so that you just send me a hi on whatsapp so that i can send on uh, you i can send you the invites i'm also active on uh, telegram the group so this is the link i'm just sharing the link here i guess most of you are joined already so i share my codes there once the link is there please someone go and verify if this link is working and if you're joining my group uh, i'm in my channel on telegram can someone open this link at their end and check if it is working yes yeah, then let me do that yeah it is working okay cool so guys you can join me there i i usually share my codes there for various tasks and stuff so you can be benefited out of that as well so this is my whatsapp number along with the country code zain zain so you can just whatsapp me there you can always the better way of getting connected is the telegram so join my channel i have my id linked there and uh, we can you know you can join me there you can message me as well so by saying this um, goodbye everyone and i hope you learned something the next class will be much more funny and much more let's say educational and uh, we'll see you soon thank you very much